talked about the four big things you need for carries. We spent a little bit more time on the carrogenic biofilm and on the actual dietary or fermentable carbohydrate influence that those two things have on that carries process. Next, let's look at some of those primary influencing factors, those things that really impact the disease process. Saliva, we mentioned this earlier. This is a huge factor, okay? This is one of those things where you need it. Patients need to have good salivary flow. Saliva is so important on so many levels. Why is it important? Why do we need saliva? Well, probably the two big things that saliva does for us is number one, it really helps out and it aids in our ability to digest our food. That's a huge important reason why we have saliva in the first place, right? Because the mouth is the gateway to where our food goes, right? Our food, we need energy to live on. We need energy to survive on. So that food starts in the mouth and that saliva is there as part of that digestive process. Now, the second big thing that saliva does for us is it helps us, prevents us from getting caries, right? It's an anti-cariogenic you know, fluid, basically. So it's got specific things that it does to help us fight that caries process. I want to talk about these four things individually, but saliva does actually help with bacterial clearance. It has antibacterial components. It helps buffer the pH in the mouth, and it also helps with the remineralization process. So when we talk about bacterial clearance, saliva is very important for this. It bathes and it lubricates our mouth on a daily basis. It helps kind of flush away some of that bacteria that's hanging out loosely in the mouth. We produce up to 1 to 1.5 liters of saliva every single day. So it has a purpose, it has a function, and one of those functions is to help cleanse and kind of clear out some of that loose bacteria in the mouth. Now this actually helps more when we're eating or when we're chewing on something, it helps that process even further. Now keep in mind that the actual flow, the production of saliva, that's going to be reduced while you're sleeping. So that's one reason why we tell patients all the time, make sure you brush your teeth before you go to bed. That saliva flow is going to decrease at bedtime. And now they're not going to have those protective factors that saliva offers them occurring while they're asleep. So if they can at least reduce that bacteria count on the teeth prior to going to bed, it won't be as critical, it won't be as big of a deal that their saliva flow is a little bit reduced while they're sleeping. Saliva actually has antibacterial properties. It actually produces proteins that help kind of fight bacteria. Now the only downside of this is their ability to fight bacteria is very broad spectrum. It's just, it's like, it's not very specific, right? It doesn't really help with specific types of bacteria. There's no memory in this either. So it's just kind of like there's some, some ammunition floating around out there. Yeah, it does a little bit, but it really doesn't have a huge effect on the actual caries process. This is actually kind of helpful, but it's not really extremely helpful for that actual caries process. Another thing saliva does for us is it actually helps to buffer the saliva. What does that even mean, right? So we talked about how there's things that occur in the mouth that help lower the pH. Well, there's things in saliva that actually help to raise that pH. Specifically in saliva, there's what's called the bicarbonate ion. This is actually present in the saliva, and when it's released into the mouth, that actually helps to buffer that pH up back to a resting pH or something that's a little bit more neutral, not very acidic. There's also urea and silin in the saliva. And when these things are broken down by the environment, the oral environment, it actually produces ammonia. Well, ammonia in turn actually, again, increases that pH in the mouth. So it helps to buffer that pH back up to a more neutral state. The ability of the saliva to buffer is extremely important for that remineralization process. So if you suspect that your patients have reduced salivary flow, or their saliva could be contributing to their caries process, it may not be a bad idea to do some salivary testing on your patients 
And specifically, you may want to look at their ability to produce saliva, how much they're producing, but also look at their ability to actually buffer. What's the pH of the saliva? Is that something that could be contributing to the actual disease process? I actually had an instructor that would just take litmus paper and you just place it underneath the patient's tongue and then you pull it out and you look at it and you compare it to the chart and you see you know, what is the pH of the mouth, right? That kind of gives you an idea of the pH of the mouth, not specifically the saliva, but if you really wanted to, you could probably take a you know, saliva sample and then actually dip your litmus paper in that saliva sample and that would probably give you an indication or at least a general idea of what the pH of the saliva is. So the last thing saliva is beneficial for is for remineralization. It actually contains phosphate ions and calcium ions. Those specific ions that are lost from that demineralization process, saliva is able to reincorporate those back into the tooth. It carries those ions with it. So for that reason, saliva is very important because we need it to help remineralize that tooth structure. And when the patient exposes themselves to fluoride on a regular basis, there's also trace amounts of fluoride that are incorporated into that saliva as well. And guess what? That fluoride is also gonna be reincorporated back into that tooth structure to help strengthen that tooth further and create a more caries-resistant environment.